question, although I'm just very brief in you know, the, all the groups. Uh, the group discussions are really happening the way I uh, the expected, where I not really expected, I, where I want. So that is being happening uh, more than expected. I'm very happy. Okay, uh, so the, uh, particularly I can see that the, the seniors, uh, they are taking the, okay, seniors they are taking, uh, being very sympathetic, going at the pace of others, it's very good. Okay, seems like there are some important questions coming up. Uh, very quick, the, there are two questions or the three questions. One, the man, you have a question? Yeah, what's the question? Uh, the, if there is the speaker, the, no, the, what is that? Mike. Okay. Yes. So, my, my question is if it is, you're seeing a flower and there are five moments of seeing the flower, then we say that the first moment is the very condition and the subsequent moments are subsequent comparison. But let's say if you are the one moment of the high consciousness seeing the first moment of the flower, and then you have a second moment of high consciousness seeing the second moment of the flower, then is this second? Okay, did you all hear the question? Okay, let me repeat the question because the, the sound. The question is the same, uh, particularly those of us who are more beginners, I suggest you to pay a little bit of attention. Beginners meaning those who are new to this concept is very helpful. Um, and there are two things. Let's say the flower. Okay, let's say the flower. The flower is the object, and your mind is the subject. Your eye consciousness is the subject. Object and subject. So this relationship between object and subject, this we can think of in two ways. One, object the flower, you don't split this into moments, first moment, second moment, third moment, don't split this, just keep it as a flower. Flower can be thought of in terms of the moments, first moment of the flower, second moment of the flower. If you look at this flower for five seconds, then the object, we can think of that as a flower, and your eye consciousness, five moments of eye consciousness looking at this flower. This is one way of putting it. And the way of putting it is just, just as you have the five moments of eye consciousness, there are the five moments of the flower. Two. The first one is flower in general. And the eye consciousness, five moments. Then the second version is just as the eye consciousness, five moments, the flower also five moments. You're getting it? Okay. Now, is this okay? Is this. Fine. If you're happy with this, then the eye consciousness. So, do you have the eye consciousness look at this flower? Okay. If I ask you to look at, look at this flower for five seconds, you have the five moments of the eye consciousness. So, what is the first moment known as? First moment of the eye consciousness, which we call as the varicognition. First moment of eye consciousness. What is the second? We call it second moment of the eye consciousness. And second, third, fourth, fifth, they are all subsequent cognizers. Only the first one is value cognition. Cognize, value cognizer, value cognition, both the same. Then, another way of saying this is first moment of the first moment of the eye consciousness, seeing the flower. Second moment of eye consciousness, seeing the flower. So the object I always said the same, flower, flower, flower. I do not split into parts. I do, do not, I, do, I do not split into the what? Temporal segment, first moment of the flower. No, just a flower. First moment of eye consciousness seeing the flower. Second moment of eye consciousness seeing the flower. So there, object is the same. Only the eye, the eye consciousness seeing the flower. So we split that into five moments. First moment, second moment, third moment. Only the first moment is the remaining are known as 
subsequent colonizers. And subsequent colonizer, colonizers and the value coordination, these two are always mutually exclusive. Meaning that what is, what is value coordination can never be subsequent colonizer. What is subsequent colonizer can never be value coordination. A girl can never be boy, a boy can never be girl. Okay, like this. Now, another version of looking at it is that first moment of eye consciousness, seeing the first moment of the flower. Second moment of the eye consciousness, seeing the second moment of the flower. You're getting it? Okay, now, what change do you see there from the first version with this second version? With the first version, object remains the same. Just the flower, first moment seeing, first moment I consciousness seeing the flower. I didn't say first moment of the flower. Second moment I consciousness seeing the flower. It's just object remains the same. But now the second version is first moment of the eye consciousness seeing the first moment of the flower. Second moment of the eye consciousness seeing the second moment of the flower. You're getting it? Now, the first moment of the consciousness, I consciousness seeing the first moment of the flower, that is value cognition. That's fine. But the second moment of the eye consciousness, seeing the second moment of the flower, is that valid cognition or subsequent cognizer? Huh? Okay. So, the, because we don't have time, I have to give the answer directly. <laughs> <laughs> right? Otherwise, this is something that you have to do a little bit of more the analysis. So, second moment of the, second moment of the consciousness, cognizing, Second moment of the flower. Second moment of the flower is that cognized by the first moment of the, the first moment of the eye consciousness? No. So second moment of the flower is newly cognized by the freshly cognized by the second moment of the eye consciousness. So the eye consciousness, that eye consciousness <clears throat> which cognizes the second moment of the flower is a valid cognition. I second moment of eye consciousness, seeing the flower is not valid cognition. Second moment of consciousness, seeing the second moment of the flower is valid cognition. You're getting it? Do you see the, the distinction? Second moment of the eye consciousness, seeing the flower is valid cognition or subsequent cognizer? Subsequent cognizer. Second moment of eye consciousness, seeing the second moment of the flower is valid cognition or subsequent cognizer? value cognition. You getting it? Yes? Okay, the mic, mic. Okay, it seems it's not on. So, with the example of second moment seeing the second moment Closer. Okay. I say it again. Uh, the second moment of the eye consciousness seeing the second moment of the flower. flower. Is that not only possible if you are directly perceiving emptiness? No. No? So it is possible for us to be... Yes, for us also. <laughs> this is possible for even the sentient beings. This is possible. Okay. Yeah. Why is it possible in some instances and not in others? No. Uh, it's with respect to the object. Is respect to the object, I consciousness, I consciousness, the second moment I consciousness, seeing the flower, and the second moment I consciousness, seeing the second moment of the flower, these two are different. Yeah. I think we need uh, the battery to be replaced. No problem. Okay, so the Buddha's mind, first moment, okay. Buddha's eye consciousness, first moment of the Buddha's eye consciousness, seeing the flower. Second moment of the Buddha's eye consciousness, seeing the flower. Not the first, second moment of the flower. So for us, second moment down is what? Subsequent cognizer. But for the Buddha's mind, the eye consciousness, first, second, third, all these moments, even with respect to the same object, they are always valid cognition. Right? 
they're all ve always very Cornishian because how the uh, so the simple answer is that the for us it is like the the remaining moment second moment down they're like the imitation of the first moment imitation the moment you imitate so for example the who can take who can make a greater decision say the head of the family head of the family the parents the father and mother um, they come to know of some very important thing and then they tell the children, young children, age five, six, seven, they tell, this is what is happening. So who can take the decision, children or the parents? Parents can take the decision. Because what the parents know is something through their own knowledge, children, they simply imitate what the parents taught them. So imitation does not have that power. Whereas the, the freshly meaning, in other words, the cognizing something by the power of, through your own power, not through imitation. That has a tremendous power, it is because of which it is referred to as the, it is very crucial in taking decisions, making decisions. So that is referred to as the valid cognition. Okay, uh, Kimla, there's a question. What is that? No, the mic doesn't work. Huh? The battery is changed? I think the battery is a problem with the battery. Yeah, it doesn't matter, Kim. Just say this. Right, so regarding the Tignagas seven and first about the one who has transformed into the reliable guy, motivated by altruism to benefit center beings, the teachers, daughter, and protector to you are the frustrations. My question is the sequence uh, indicated here is the teacher, Sukata and protector. So I'm just wondering that Buddha Shakuni when he sits under the Bodhi tree when he becomes enlightened, he is actually first Sugata first. And after that he, he will get up from his seat and search for students and he become a teacher. So how is it that this sequence is the other way around? Okay. So the order the order of order of the four premises which Acharya Dignaga laid is I uh, say the, um, it says, the one who has transformed into the reliable God, motivated by altruism to benefit sensual beings. This, is, this comes first, that's fine. Then the second, it says teacher. Third, it says sugada. Sugada means and the one who has gone to the perfect bliss after purifying everything, purifying your mental defilements. Only after purifying the mental defilements, then the, the Buddha became the teacher. So the teacher should become, come after Sugada, not before Sugada. So why it is put before Sugada? This is a question. This is a very serious question. As this a teacher, um, say, oftentimes, we, how we give the labels. There are two ways of giving the labels. Given the, the resultant label of the resultant state to the causal state. Giving the label of the resultant state to the causal state. So, and the what for the Buddha was Buddha left the palace? What for? What for? To look for look for the solution. Look for a solution. What is the solution? The wisdom of emptiness which he has to teach. So, which he has to teach, although he is yet to find it, but who is looking for that. And finally, he got it. He got the wisdom of emptiness, but still it is in a very, say, the initial stage. So this wisdom of emptiness is given the label. This is the wisdom, ultimately, which he is going to teach. So the resultant state that he was going to become as a teacher is this label is given to the initial phase of the understanding of emptiness, the selflessness which he had. It's the, the label of the resultant state given to the causal state. It's not the resultant state in itself. Yeah. Okay, one over there. I just want to double confirm. Uh, the reason why Buddhas are able to view the five different moments of flowers is it because they have realized subtle impermanence or for ordinary beings we view imitations because we have not realized it. Okay, so basically the thing is, um, the, of course, uh, the um, Taishan, Taishan, right? Okay, so what Taishan said is related, is related to the answer that we are looking for, that the Buddha's consciousnesses 
even the sense consciousnesses, whichever moment, they're always valid cognition. For us, the sense consciousnesses, only the first moment is the valid cognition. The remaining sense consciousnesses are, at the most can be, are the subsequent cognizers, not valid cognition. So why? And the Buddha, because the Buddha realized the impermanence directly and so forth. Okay, they are related. But the direct answer is that what the Buddha cognizes, what the Buddha cognizes, the first consciousness, first moment of the eye consciousness, seeing the flower, second moment of eye consciousness, seeing the flower, the power remains the same. Power is the same. Power is the same. Just as the first one is very fresh, second one is also very fresh. In our case, first one is very fresh, and second one, third one is not as fresh. Right? So freshly. This is not happening with us, whereas it happens to the Buddhas. Okay. Yes. Uh, you said we are doing the Chittamatra school. Uh, chapter 3 is Chittamatra school. Uh, but when you did Buddhist psychology, you said this part is uh, uh, when we do valid condition, it's a South African school. Okay. Amazing. Very good question. So this is coming from? Coming from? Nalanda Diploma Course, which means that those who are not doing it, she's in a way saying that you have to do that. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. Okay, so the, what Bhavan is saying is a very important point. And say, the four chapters of Pramana Vartika. Uh, chapter three, the philosophy, Acharya uh, the Dharmakirti, he taught the Cheta Matra philosophy in great detail. Philosophy, that is the content. And the container, container was the first chapter and the chapter four. These two are primarily on the ba basis of, on the, and then the third, the, this one also, the chapter two. So primarily based on the South Tantrika school, second school. Whereas the third chapter is purely Chetamadra school. So why the, he presented you know, two different philosophical schools while, present, the, while writing one book? Okay, so the idea is that the chapter one, two, four. Chapter one, two, four, it is not Svatantrika in particular. It is common. The presentation is common between Swatantrika, the, the South Tantric school, and Chittamatra, common. And the third one is exclusively of the Chittamatra. Okay, now is there any pressing questions? If not, we will continue the, the part where we left. Page four, page four, root text uh, stands two, which reads, the sound is valid with respect to the meaning of the object, which is clearly perceived. Okay, and the um, okay. Let us do a little bit of a little bit of the rectifying the translation, which is clearly perceived. Which is clearly perceived. Okay. Which is clearly perceived. Um, the okay. Which is uh, clearly perceived. Perceived as clearly perceived as okay. Let's say which is clearly perceived by the mind. Which is clearly perceived by the mind. Then add this. Add this in bracket as per the intention of bracket close. Let me say this again. Third line, which is clearly perceived by the mind, by the mind, then in bracket, bracket open, as per, P-E-R, as per the intention of, bracket, bracket close, the utterer. Let me read this again. Um, the sound is valid with respect to the meaning of the object, which is clearly perceived by the mind, bracket open, as per the intention of, break it close, the utterer. Got it? Okay, so the, the, um, 
what it said is the sound is valid with respect to the meaning of the object, meaning of the object meaning. So for example, if I say, if I say, uh, okay, I want water. What is water? Okay, the, uh, okay, most of you know Momo, right? <laughs> okay, let's say uh, the I want I want chokse. Didn't you? I want chokse. Huh? You know the word. You know the word meaning that he said what? He said chokse. He want chokse. You know that, right? Bring chokse. But you don't know what it refers to. You know the word, exact word. He said chokse. What is chokse? Right? You have to check it. Okay. So sound is valid with respect to the meaning of the object. Meaning the object is what? Object? Object? What I said is chokse. That's object. And the meaning, you don't know the meaning. Right? You know the meaning. So where is the Wang Dan La? No, said. What is chokse? Table. Right, a table. So the table is the meaning or the referent, referent of the word chokse, the object, the chokse which I said, the referent is the table, which you understand it now. Right? So this, res respect to the referent object, which is clearly perceived by the mind. Meaning, for example, say, I say this to you, I say this to you, and then perceived, Perceived by the, for example, I say this, and your mind, perceived by the mind of the hearer, the listener. Mind of the listener as per the intention of the utterer. Intention of me. What is my, my intention? I want to ask you to bring it to the table. Whether you can or not can, this is a different matter. But the intention is inferred from this. What is that intention? My intention, intention of the atra is the, that you should bring a table. Okay, so clearly, and then you clearly understood that. You clearly understood that, okay, he's asking for a table. You have understood that? And you, okay, he wants a table. This is what you understood it. So at the most, you can infer. So this word, the word, the label that I use, can at the most help you to understand my intention which is earlier said also, my intention. But it is not really, it is not really, we'll say for example, if I say, the, you say I'm re, I really am keen to know the emptiness of the table. I'm keen to know the emptiness of the table. Then you say, okay, he said he's keen to know the, yes, he wants to know the emptiness of the table, right? But if you don't know what emptiness of the table yourself, what I said, the words you can carry with you, but, the, simply because I said that empty the table doesn't mean that empty of my empty the table comes to your mind. How many when I say okay, the um, the same kubya is empty of objective existence. Kubya is empty of objective existence. What did you hear? Kubya is wow, amazing! You got it correctly. You understood that? You said that you are. The, do you understand what I, what I said? Huh? Some say yes, some say no. Huh? Oh, it's simply the words you, you know, but what they refer to you don't know. So what is kubja? Chair. Chair. Right? I want to know the emptiness chair. Okay, now what did you hear? I want to know the emptiness of the chair. This is what you heard, right? Em Emptiness of chair is amazing. You say, okay, he wants to say that emptiness of chair is amazing. He wants to say that. So at the most, you know the intention of me, the utterer, but you don't, I don't, they, amongst you, there may be those who are already in the Paragadi level. I'm not too sure. <laughs> if you are there, I'm sorry. If you are not there, if you're not in this level, then although you heard this word, emptiness of the chair, but you yourself, when I use the word, 
There's no better word to say empty suit chair than empty suit chair. This is the best word that I can use. But this meaning is not reflected in your mind. Reflected, not reflected. The, the empty suit chair, it, come, it came to your word, it came to your mind, or the image of the word came to your mind. Image of the word came to your mind, not the meaning of the word. It did not come to your, the meaning of the word did not come to your mind. If the meaning of the word come to your mind, it's amazing. Then I can say emptiness of the, empty, emptiness of the table, then you will, wow, emptiness, I understand now. Right? You don't have to study. You're getting it? So the meaning is not reflected, simply the generic image or the image of the word came to your mind. Right? Because you can em emulate, em imitate what I said. Okay. It is not the reason to, for example, if I say, wow, emptiness of, the, emptiness of the self is so profound. I say this, right? Wow, it's amazing. Then what you can infer? Okay, I don't know what emptiness of self is, but he is so fascinated by the emptiness of the self. I don't know what emptiness of self is, but he's so fascinated, so he wants to see this. He wants to express this. Intention. You could infer the intention. So, but... This word that I said, emptiness of the, the self is amazing. When I say this, emptiness of the self is amazing. When I say this, it does not establish what emptiness is in your mind. Right? It says, it is not the reason to establish the fact of the meaning. Emptiness, for example. Fact of the meaning is emptiness. Simply when I say that the table is empty of objective Existence. When I say this, in your mind, wow, empty subjective it comes to your mind. No, it doesn't come to your mind. You're getting it? It doesn't come to your mind. Simply the generic image of the word comes to your mind. Image of the word comes to your mind. The meaning may not come to your mind. It is not the reason. For example, emptiness, how do we establish emptiness? With reasons. How do we establish, okay, how can we understand emptiness? Through study. How? We study the reasons how things are empty. You're getting it? So the, say, when I say, oh, things are empty of objective existence, at the most somebody who's just a total newcomer, oh, he said that things are empty of objective existence. Or if I say things are illusion-like, so in your mind, okay, he said things are illusion-like, but I don't know how it is illusion-like. But he did say this, guaranteed to say this. Okay, so this word is not a proof, it is not a reason to establish emptiness in your mind. You getting it? You get it? Okay, tell me. So this, even to unfold this, to really understand emptiness, keep this away for the time being, even to unfold this, the meaning of this word is very precious. Right? Okay, tell me. Say, to say that, for example, this flower, this flower, it's empty of objective existence. It's not really in the air. And you, you will ask what? What will you ask? How? How can you say that it does not exist object? It's like a dream. How can you say that it's coming from your mind? OK, look at this. Do you agree with me that this flower is nothing but made of millions of atoms? Do you agree with me? Hey. Yes. Yes, it's made of millions of atoms. You go to the atoms. Which atom is the flower? You say, no. Right? So it does appear to your mind as a flower? Yes. But when you go towards the object, it's just the atoms? Yes. None of the atoms are the flower? Yes. Amongst the atoms, there's no flower there? Yes. But the flower earlier perceived to your mind? Yes. It's just a perception. Just a perception. Beyond that, there's no, nothing there's a flower. Wow, that's amazing. So this is through this reasoning. We have to, you know, take somebody into the emptiness concept. Simply because flower is empty of objective existence. Does not mean anything to somebody who is new to this concept. At the most, the person will say that, okay, what did he say? He said the flower is empty of objective existence. This the person can imitate. But the meaning may not be reflected at all. So the meanings have to be reflected through giving reasons. So these words are not the reasons. You're getting it? Words are not the reason. So it says, this word that I uttered is not the reason to establish the fact of the meaning, like the emptiness of the fall. You're getting it? Okay. From this, this is a very important message. This is a very important message. Oftentimes, what happens is that, that so this is how many people follow. 
In fact, I think like two years ago, two years ago, yes, two years ago, in Singapore, doing one-on-one on the meeting, um, there was one professor, Singaporean professor, and the, the meeting with me. Then he asked me one question, which is extremely complicated. Just see how complicated that is. He said that you are a Buddhist. I said, yes. <laughs> right? Generally speaking, I don't expect the Singaporeans to be that direct. <laughs> he said, you are a Buddhist. I said, yes. Then I, I didn't know what he's going to ask next. <laughs> then he said that, imagine that if you're not born in a Buddhist family, imagine that you're not born in a Buddhist family, do you still think that you're going to be Buddhist? This is a very serious question. 90%, 90% of the people who are following religions, Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Jainism, or Judaism, or say the, the Baha'i, or the Zoroastrianism, any religion that one follows, 90% of the people, they follow simply because they are born in that family of the, that religion. Right? Because of that. Now, they start believing in this. Believing in this. And all these religions, many of them are contradictory. Contradictory. Simply, it is blind faith. So, if a teacher comes and says something very complicated things, nothing's really there. Wow, nothing's there. Everything's there. Wow, everything's there. <laughs> This is our thinking. And somebody says, everything is empty of objective existence. Emptiness. If emptiness is non-existent. He says something more. Right? Buddha said, everything is empty of objective existence. Then the other person wants to outshine the Buddha. Say that, oh, even emptiness, even emptiness doesn't exist. Right? Emptiness doesn't exist. Nothing exists. Nothing exists conventionally, not only ultimately, nothing exists conventionally. Wow, Buddha, Buddha is able to say only one thing, that nothing exists, exists ultimately. But the Buddha could not say nothing exists conventionally. But he's saying that not only ultimately, also conventionally, he's more profound. Terrible. Because we don't understand what the Buddha said. We don't understand what this person is saying. Whether this person, what the person is saying, whether the person really understands what he himself is saying. We don't analyze this. We are falling blindly. We simply are fascinated by the words. And at best, Acharya Dharma is saying that words at the best can infer what? Intention of the person, not the subject matter. Right? Whereas we believe on the basis of the words. This is our problem. So these studies are so powerful, so precious. Say, so for example, good and bad. We have to do good. We have to be good. We should be kind. We should be compassionate. These are so precious teachings. And if somebody comes, we have to transcend compassion. We have to transcend kindness. Right? Terrible. Even the little virtue that you're doing, that person simply destroys that virtue within your mind. Right? We have to transcend kindness. We have to transcend virtues, non-virtues all. Okay, so... So these are, so, and then people are so fascinated by this because we follow the words, we don't follow the meanings. And the words, at the most, they can infer what? Intention of the person wanting to say this. It doesn't mean anything of the meaning. For the meaning, you have to explore yourself. So this is how we follow blindly. So this, even this one stanza is an incredibly precious advice for us not to follow blindly. This is so precious. Otherwise, there are so many teachers who teach something, just, you know, come for one hour and say something very strange things. And then many people are so fascinated. Wow, it's amazing. And finally, what is left with you? Wow, is left. Wow. What wow? The little virtue that you, you otherwise do, you discard that. Right? We have to transcend compassion. What is compassion? We have to transcend compassion. We have to transcend anger. We have to transcend anger is good. We have to transcend compassion. Terrible. <laughs> even the little virtue that you have, even that is destroyed. Even this person who's saying this, we don't know whether the person really understands what he or she is saying. 
right? So these, somebody has to say something strange so that people will be attracted. This is a disaster. So therefore, we should be wise. Just look at these precious teachings. By Acharya Dharmakirti, what did he say? These words, at the most, they can infer the intention of the person, not the meaning. Right? Okay. Uh, reference number seven. Second, abandon the argument that the set definition of value cognition has the flow of over-provision. Over-provision meaning the maximalist redundancy. Okay, maximalist redundancy. <clears throat> so now what they say is that your definition, your definition, you meaning you, we the followers of Acharya Dharmakirti, right? Your definition of the value cognition. What is the definition of value cognition that Acharya Dharmakirti gave? Hey. Uh, an awareness which is freshly non-deceptive. Okay, which is freshly non-deceptive. If this is a definition, this, this has the flaw of, the opponents are saying, this has the flaw of maximalist redundancy. It's over-pervasive. It's over-pervasive. Right? Over-pervasive meaning that it encompasses more than, for example, if I say that, okay, what do you understand by a good person? Good person is somebody with two eyes and one nose. Two eyes, one nose, right? Anybody who has two eyes, one nose, this is a good person. Right? Is this a good definition? No, it's over pervasive. There are so many terrible people with two eyes and one nose. <laughs> right? It's over pervasive. Is it maximalist redundancies there? So they say that your definition has a flaw of the maximalist redundancy. It is, it is over-pervading, over-pervading beyond the value cognition. Even the non-value cognition the, has to be positive value cognition, such as, such as the, the, the subsequent cognizers. The opponents are saying that if this is the definition of value cognition, for you, even the subsequent cognizers should be considered as value cognition. Because when you look at this flower for five seconds, the first moment of the eye consciousness sees the flower. Second moment of the eye consciousness also sees the flower. Third moment of the eye So all these are subsequent cognizers. OK, look at this flower. Can you think of this flower? Now, can you think of this flower? Yes. So there's this. Not direct, but conceptual. That is value cognition or subsequent cognizer. OK, now I'm hiding the flower. Can you still, can you still remember that flower? Yes. yes, even though you're not seeing it directly, still you can remember that. That memory, does it cognize the flower? Yes, no? Yes, yes. Is yes. to cognize, don't be scared. <laughs> to cognize, it's not necessary, you should cognize directly. Cognition there are two. One is direct and one is one is direct, one is conceptually. Right? Okay. Direct and conceptual, what's the difference? Is what's the difference? Is <clears throat> okay. Do you see a flower? How do you know that there's a flower here? My eye consciousness can see that. Whose eye consciousness, my or your? Your eye consciousness. Your eye consciousness is in your hand, right? Okay. Now what I do, keep your eye, because your eye consciousness, not mine, is yours, keep your eye consciousness. Hold it, hold it. Keep holding it. What happened to the eye consciousness? Hey, what happened to the eye consciousness seeing the flower? Cease. No, I asked you to hold it. It's your eye consciousness. Okay, so your eye consciousness, it cannot remain as eye consciousness seeing the flower. The moment the object disappears, the eye consciousness seeing the flower also dissolves. You're getting it? So whereas now, look at the flower and think of the flower. Not only look at the flower, think of the flower. Think of the flower by gazing at the flower, continue to think of the flower. Think of the flower, think of the flower. Can you think of the flower? Yes, even the flower is withdrawn, still you can think of it. When the flower is withdrawn, your eye consciousness 
cannot, you cannot hold the I consciousness. But the thinking still remains. So thinking remains, thinking does not necessarily be directly related to, to the object. So thinking is because of the image coming to your mind. That image is not this. That image is known as generic image. Any mind which gets to the object through the generic image is known as conceptual mind. Conceptual mind. Any mind which gets to the object directly without the generic image is known as direct perceiver. Any mind which uses the generic image, image, this generic image to get to the object is known as conceptual mind. Okay, so with this, I say, when I, as you look at the, you think of the flower, you are thinking of the flower. So this thinking of the flower, is that, is that, does it recognize the flower? Yes, it can recognize the flower which existed a few minutes ago. It does recognize the flower. So is that the value cognition? Is it value cognition? Huh? First moment of the thinking? Okay, first moment of the conceptual thought? Is not. Why not? Because it's the imitation of the eye consciousness. Right? So this, this is a Subsequent, subsequent cognizer or the value cognition? Subsequent cognizer. So, the so thinking of the flower, thinking of the flower, that is the subsequent cognizer which imitated the eye consciousness, seeing the flower. So therefore, these, the thinking of the flower, or the conceptual mind perceiving the flower, that is the subsequent cognizer, not the value cognition. Now, the opponent is saying that even this thinking, conceptual mind thinking of the flower, that, is also, that should be a value cognition according to your definition. So what is your answer? Okay, my conceptual mind thinking of the flower, is that value cognition? No. Why not? Because it is a subsequent cognizer. How it is a subsequent cognizer? How? Because it is the imitation of the eye consciousness, earlier eye consciousness, which saw the flower. So therefore, this is subject subsequent cognizer. It is not the value cognition. So this is how Acharya Dharma gives the response. Okay, let's see. Uh, stanza three, page four. The concealer, the concealer meaning, concealer meaning the conceptual mind, conceptual mind, conceptual mind's mind is oftentimes also referred to as Concealer. Why concealer? Same. Okay. The, the, can you think of the what? Malaysian Twin Towers now? Can you think of that? Can you think of that? Okay. If you can think of the Malaysian Twin Towers, this Malaysian Twin Towers that is coming to your mind, that's coming to your mind. Oh, Malaysian Twin Towers came to your mind, or the image of the Malaysian Twin Towers came to your mind? Image. Not the Malaysian Twin Towers. You do not think about the Malaysian Twin Towers. You are thinking about the image of the Malaysian Twin Towers. Are you thinking about the Malaysian Twin Towers? Image. Image. You, so don't think of the image of the Twin Towers, think of the Twin Towers. Can you think of mother? Huh? You cannot think of. What happened to you? <laughs> Coming to this retreat, your intelligence should grow. Your parents will be very upset, very sad to see your intelligence shrink down. You can't even think of your mother. Can you think of your mother? Yes. yes. Can you think of the Twin Towers? Yes. Malaysian Twin Towers? Yes. yes. Okay, think of it. Now, what came to your mind? Malaysian, Malaysian Twin Towers came to your mind, or the image of Malaysian Twin Towers came to your mind? Malaysian Twin Towers came to your mind? Huh? Malaysian Twin Towers, it, did come to, it, it came to your mind? Hey, yes, no? Huh? No. Okay, so which means that the image of the Malaysian Twin Towers came to your mind? Yes. Which means you are thinking of the Malaysian, the two image of the Malaysian Twin Towers? Yes. No, the object is the Twin Tower, but what came, appeared to the mind is the matter. 
So what are you seeing is not really the, the, the Twin Towers, right? What are you seeing is just the image of the Twin Towers. So the object is the, twin, the, object, the image of the Twin Towers. So you, you have been thinking of the, uh, the image of the Twin Towers. You're not thinking of the Twin Towers. I asked you to think of the Twin Towers. You're not being so serious. <laughs> okay, tell me what happened. <laughs> yes, Vijan. The Twin Towers came to our mind through the image. Okay, it came to your mind. It came to this hall. Okay, Twin Towers did not come to this hall. Your mind is not in this hall. Okay, you cannot see it directly, but did you think of the Twin Towers? Okay, Twin Towers came to your mind? It came to your mind. It came to this hall? No. Okay, so your mind is in this hall? Your, 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 okay, image came, not the Twin Towers. So you are thinking of the image, not the Twin Towers. Okay, you are not thinking of the Twin Towers. You cannot think of your mother. <laughs> uh -huh. if, you, you are, if you think about the mother, your mother should come in front of you. <laughs> okay. So what happened? Uh, what happened? Uh, Yen? Uh. Okay, so the mix came to you. <laughs> if the mix came to you, the two should come to you. Okay, you are, I asked you to think of the mother, you are not thinking of your mother, instead you are thinking of the image of the mother. This is this what you're saying? You are not thinking of your mother. Okay, you are thinking of the image of the mother. Don't think of the image of the mother, think of the mother. Can you can do that? What happened? <laughs> it becomes more complicated. Okay, you are lucky that it's just seven days. <laughs> All right, I have to give the answer. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the, say, Twin Towers may not come to your mind. Your mind gets access to the Twin Towers, not directly. Your mind gets access to the Twin Towers via, through the image. Your mind gets access to the Twin Towers. If the Twin Towers come here, which means it is direct, it is not via, right? So your mind gets access to the Twin Towers via the image. These minds are known as conceptual minds, right? Yes? If I was a Buddha and uh, I, thought of the, <laughs> I thought of the Twin Towers, would I actually be there? I mean, or, or would they? <laughs> okay, let's talk, about, let's talk about the Twin Towers in New York. Okay. Not the Twin Towers here. Buddha pervades everywhere, right? Yeah. So therefore, while the Buddha is here, his mind can see every atom of the universe, right? Okay, Twin Towers of New York now is at zero ground, ground zero. It's not there. Okay, so Buddha's mind, does it see the Twin Towers in New York? Okay, it sees, it sees, not saw. It sees, it sees. It sees the Twin Tower of New York, not today. It sees the Twin Tower of New York many years ago. It sees, not just saw. It saw, it sees, it will see of the Twin Towers, New York Twin Towers that existed many years ago. It sees. For us, it's we saw, not we see. You're getting this difference. Okay, this is a little digression. So the point is any mind which gets to its object via or through the generic image Genetic image, these minds are known as conceptual mind. Okay, within the conceptual mind, for example, the conceptual mind which, which follows the, uh, the sensory consciousnesses. Conceptual minds which follows the sensory, conscious mind, uh, sensory consciousnesses, they can never be valid cognition. At the most, they can be subsequent cognizers. So you look at this flower with your eye consciousness for five minutes, five seconds, then I put it. I remove the flower, your mind can still think. That is a conceptual mind. So this conceptual mind is still thinking of the flower, is cognizing the flower, flower, not, but not freshly. It is like an imitation, imitation of the earlier eye consciousnesses, having seen the 
flower. You're getting it? Okay. So this is, this is subsequent colonizer. This is not a valid coordination. Number three. Okay. The, why I'm saying this is the, the, say these conceptual minds are referred to as the concealer minds. Concealer. Why concealer? Because it conceals the bare object. It does not see the bare object. It conceals the bare object. Okay. Bare object, I hide it, I conceal the hide, I conceal it, still you can think of the flower. So that flower does not contain the bare object. It is concealed by the generic image. It's concealed by the generic image of the flower. So generic image of the flower comes in the way to, and thus conceal you of seeing the bare object. Okay, are you now thinking of the flower? Think of that flower. Think of the flower. Are you thinking of the flower? Are you, your, this thought, conceptual mind, is it, having a, is it having a direct access to the flower? No. Which means that it conceals. You cannot have the direct access. It is like, for example, so this flower, this flower, I hide it, conceal it with this. You cannot see the flower, but you know that there's a flower behind this. So this flower is concealed by this cloth. This cloth. Likewise, our mind, conceptual mind, which cannot see the flower directly because that is concealed by the generic image. That image conceals you from seeing the bare flower. So therefore, the conceptual minds are oftentimes referred to as the concealer mind. Okay, number three. Concealer, the subsequent cognition, is not valid cognition as it apprehends what is perceived already by what is perceived already by? OK, let's read this again. I know that your mind is a little tired. So even though we read it, your mind is not flowing. OK. The concealer subsequent cognition, which is like the conceptual mind thinking of the flower. Think of the flower, which is a subsequent mind with respect to the eye consciousness having seen the flower before. So this conceptual mind is not valid cognition as it apprehends, it apprehends the flower, which is perceived already by, by the sense consciousnesses, eye sense consciousness before. Now, what is valid cognition? Awareness alone is valid cognition. Awareness here is awareness which earlier, earlier awareness, earlier awareness, which, which drags the subsequent corners to arise. This subsequent cognizer arises because of the earlier eye consciousness. So the earlier eye consciousness, which brings the subsequent cognizer arise, this earlier, what if earlier mind, that is that alone is the value cognition. Awareness here is the awareness we saw the object before. That alone is the value cognition. In other words, the first moment, with respect to the flower, the first moment. Okay, so now we are coming to a very important point. We'll stop here. We are on reference eight. Any questions? One or two questions? Yes. Okay, answer is yes. So the opponents are saying that this definition is over pervasive. Maximalist redundancy, because what is not value cognition, even these you have to say that they are value cognition. For example, all the subsequent cognizers, they are not value cognition. But as per your definition, we should, you should say that they are also subsequent cognizers, because they are also the minds, they are also the minds which cognize the object freshly, which cognize the, cognize the, which, which are non deceptive with respect to this object in a fresh way. So Acharya Dharmagiddhi responds by saying that no, they simply imitate. They imitate it, what the early cognizers, they cognize. This is not fresh cognition. Sorry? Are the opponents lower to this? Okay. Who are the opponents? They are very strange opponents are there. <laughs> very strange opponents are there. Who say that? Valid cognition, it is only the direct sense valid cognition, right? There's no other valid cognition, it's only the direct, only the sense valid cognitions. 
accepting only one value cognition. Achara Dharma Gita accepts two value cognitions. Sense, the, the meaning direct value cognition, and the inferential value cognition, two. So, they are very strange, the what I call epist epistemologist, who speak about, or psychologists who speak about very strange concepts of the mind, only one mind, 11 minds, various versions are there, yeah. We change? Okay, the Wang Den La. It's not the second moment of my consciousness sees the second moment of flower. The flower? Is it because the flower is momentarily changing? Okay, this is a very good question. Second moment of my consciousness seeing the second moment of flower. Second moment of I consciousness seeing the flower. Second moment, I consciousness seeing the second moment of the flower. There are two versions. Second moment of I consciousness seeing the second moment of the flower. Is it because that the, the the flower is momentarily changing? Answer is yes. Answer is yes. So, because the flower is momentarily changing, we can speak about speak of the both. Second moment of the flower. Second moment, I consciousness seeing the flower in general. Second moment, I consciousness seeing the second moment of the flower. We can speak of both because the flower is changing. If the flower is not changing momentarily, we cannot speak of the second part. We can speak of only the first part. Yes. So opponents are saying even the second moment of the I consciousness that sees the flower is a valid question. Okay. Okay, uh, because uh, say the se the eye consciousness. So let's say eye consciousness first, second, third. Uh, we can say that the, the imitation or the second moment that's easy, but the mental consciousness suddenly there is a new set of mind coming, not eye consciousness, but the mental consciousness, conceptual mind is coming up. That mental consciousness coming up, so that is a totally fresh new one. It's not the old one coming, following. It's the new continuum coming up. So that is the well cognition. So this is the, the yeah, this for that reason, yeah. Uh, this might be connected to that question. <coughs> um, I'm looking at about 100 objects as my mind moves around. So as my mind goes back to the oranges uh, after a short break, is that a valid cognition the first moment again, or am I going on a, is it a limitation? Okay, let's say, Say that the, let's say, the flower, look at the flower, and then you scan through all the other people, and go back to the flower, <laughs> right? Okay, so the first moment of the, seeing the flower, then I say another five moments, scanning the other people, then the sixth moment, again go back to the flower, sixth moment of the eye consciousness, seeing the flower, is that valid cognition or subsequent cognizer? What's the answer? Anybody? Value cognition? Huh? Subsequent? Subsequent cognizer? See you again? Thinking? <laughs> Subsequent. 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 Okay, then value cognition is very precious, only one. <laughs> <laughs> Only when, when, when you're a child, right? <laughs> Otherwise, next time you see a flower, right? It's all <laughs> you see it before. Okay, okay. So what is that? This is okay. How many you say the, 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 the okay? First moment you see a flower, then you look at uh, the second, third, fourth, fifth moment you see something else. Six moment go we go back to the flower. So six moments seeing the flower is that valid cognition or subsequent cognizer? This question. How many you say valid cognition? Raise hands. How would you say subsequent cognizer? Uh? Okay, my question. Back first moment of thy consciousness, seeing the flower. Then the second moment, seeing something else. Second moment, seeing the book. Third moment, seeing the Anila. Fourth moment, seeing Bruce. <laughs> and fifth moment, seeing Kimla. And the sixth moment, going to back to the flower. So that first six moment of the eye consciousness, seeing the flower, is that subsequent cognizer or valid cognition? Sharon, what's the answer? Uh, six eye seeing the flower. Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't say this. I said 
the sixth moment, eye consciousness seeing the flower. Subsequent. Huh? One thing Value cognition. Okay, one thing is value cognition. Which means then the. Then why not the second moment? Okay, second moment is immediately after the first moment, so this is imitation. Sixth one is not immediately after the. This is interrupted. These two are interrupted by other moments. So therefore, it is not the imitation, it is a fresh. Uh, the cognition. Oh, that's good. Okay, so I'll go for it. <laughs> I'll go with this. Yeah, anyway, the, the, we have to discuss more on this. Any questions? Yes. Uh, I read somewhere in Latino Portuguese text says that there's a school, there's a school of thoughts actually define valid cognition as uh, being valid cognition only when you see the object in your lifetime for the first time. Is that such a... Um, okay. Okay, so basically this is all the debates. Okay. Not really as a formulated system or school, but say then the, in one life you have only one valid cognition, right? Because, right, I see you as an object. I see this object. As this object, anything that you see later, you see as object, 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 object. This is all imitation of the early moments. Right? Okay, so the, the debates are there, but we need to have a, say, the, we need to create a concept which is not contradictory with the conventional world. Right? Okay, yes. Mm. My understanding is that the opponents are saying that the definition is not adequate. Mm. And because it doesn't include... Include all the valid cognitions. The opponents are saying, this is what? The minimalist inadequacy. So this definition is inadequate. It doesn't en encompass all the other valid cognitions. Like the sound is what they are saying. So this morning we discussed about valid cognition or the reliability pertaining to the person, the sound, and the mind. So they're bringing the sound. But, but is valid cognition itself related to the mind? Okay, this is a good question. Very good question. So now the point is that first we have to study the way it is taught, and then as we have studied more, those of those of us here who studied more, keep your mind not confined to one thing, or oh, the Buddhist psychology. Keep your mind broader. So how the debates are coming into being, right? So how the sound comes into the play. Sound is not at all mind in the first place. Value cognition is confined to mind in a strict sense. Value cognition is the awareness. Awareness which is freely non-deceptive. Right? This is how we define it. So value cognition should be awareness. Okay. So this is how the say Acharya Dharmakirti defined the value cognition. But the opponents may say that this is your definition. This is not I won't accept your definition. You're getting it? Okay. So there value cognition, very broad sense, value cognition has three connotations. Connotations meaning it is applicable to three things. Valid cognition, in a loose sense, valid. Instead of cognition, valid. Or oh, valid cognition is fine. Valid cognition of the person. Valid cognition in the context of the sound. Valid cognition in the context of the mind. Three. Right? Then how we came to the mind? What made the person so reliable and valid is because of the mind. What made the sound very valid and reliable is because of the mind. So the mind, finally everything boils down to the mind. To see something is valid or not, it, it is determined on the basis of the, the mind to be valid or not. So a mind which is valid is known as the valid cognition, in general, valid cognition. Then we speak of the valid cognition focused on the mind. Okay. So then the, 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 he's saying, 
the opponents are saying that if this is how you define it, then the value cognition is become very narrow because value cognition is broader than how you defined it. Value cognition is broader. What the definition that you gave is minimalist, redundant, minimalist inadequacy. Minimalist inadequacy. It is inadequate. It, it cannot encompass the other value cognitions. So for the opponents, sound is also value cognition. Sound, right? Not in the sense that sound is awareness. No, not in that context. Because the sound, say, for example, do you agree with me? That if I say, okay, uh, now it's already 6.48, we have to stop. I said it, okay, he meant it, right? So the meaning, you can infer the meaning from what I'm saying. But this is not always the case with the sound. I can say, say I go to Israel and somebody says something, some words, which I don't know the meaning. But the words are very pleasant or very interesting. So I just repeat it in front of you. So if that is said by them, they mean something. But if I say this, it simply infers the intention, not the what this word refers to. You're getting it? So the sound is not valid cognition with this respect. It does not really convey the meaning inside this sound. Sound, when I say something, at the most you can precisely Predict what? Intention that I have, intention to say this word that much. Okay, any questions? Okay. Te ata om gati gati bara gati bara sam gati bodhi swaha Om Gati Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhi Swahatyata Om Gati Gati Paragati Bodhi Swaha. Page 49, dedication. Page 49 of the Blaze of Nodule Bodhicitta's dedication. Page 49 of the Blaze of the Nodule Bodhicitta's. I dedicate the merit thus gathered towards the realization of the deeds and the prayers of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the three times. And with the upholding of the doctrine of scripture and insight, may I in all lives through the force of this merit never separate from the four wheels of the Mahana vehicle and accomplish all the stages of the path, renunciation, bodhicitta, perfume in the two stages. From my two collections, vast space that I've amassed from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds, wisdom, eyes blinded by ignorance. Okay, three prostrations.